Good morning again, I'm Maurice Barrett. I've got another Monday morning meditation for you. I trust you've had a good weekend. I've had a brilliant weekend with with friends and fellowship and ministry. I filled a, a challenge for the second part of 2020, the year of change. Today I'm looking at the, the question, should the church have a calendar? It's part three of the last one. We've looked at the feasts of the Old Testament, found that we don't need to keep them. We've looked at the New Testament to see if there's a calendar that we should keep. Should we keep Easter and Christmas and Ash Wednesday, Show Tuesday, or all the church calendar and found that it's all pagan. That So we certainly shouldn't be keeping that. But the Sabbath days are separate. I'll explain. The Sabbath wasn't instituted with the law of Moses. The seventh day, the Sabbath, is part of the order of creation. And Moses didn't institute it like he did with the feasts and the new moons. So let me read it, Exodus 20, verse 8 to 11. God said through Moses, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. So it was already instituted. Six days you shall labour, do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall not do any work, you nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your manservant, nor your maidservant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger which is within your gates. The Sabbath day was instituted at creation by God. It's actually God's Sabbath. And it carries on, this is verse 11 now. For in six days the Lord God made heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. And he rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So he set it apart, he sanctified it, made it holy. And Genesis 2 verse 2 and 3. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he's made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Because that in it he had rested from all his work which he would created and made. Just as a matter of interest there's two words there that he created and made. They're separate. So the weekly Sabbath wasn't a religious day. It was a day of rest. There's nothing in the whole of the law of Moses. Uh, No instructions to pray or sacrifice or go to the temple on the Sabbath. The Sabbaths that were included in the feast days, of course, they were different. But the normal weekly Sabbath were not a religious day at all. It was just to rest from your labours as God rested from his. So what the law doesn't institute, when the law's annulled, it doesn't annul the the Sabbath because it wasn't instituted with the law. Because the Sabbath is not part of the moral law of God, or it wasn't instituted as a moral law, or the ceremonial law. It's a law of creation, just as much as sleep and feeding our bodies is. God's made fixed laws, and we need to keep them just to live a healthy life. If we don't feed our bodies, we become sickly and eventually we'll die. If we don't get enough sleep, it'll affect our bodies and our spirits and our minds. And I believe if we don't rest one day in seventh, then we're not living according to how God made us. And I believe we'll suffer mentally, physically and spiritually. As much as when we neglect any law of creation. God's made these laws of creation for us, for our benefit, because we're we're not immortal. We've got to look after our bodies. And so our bodies and our minds, our spirits, were made to work six and rest seventh. Don't forget, this was before sin. God didn't institute the Sabbath after Adam and sinned and said, well, you need to rest now. He needed to rest before sin in a perfect human body that had to have the tree of life to keep it living forever. And it's important because it's a prophecy of God's plan. God's going to work for 6,000 years, that's coming to an end. And then God's going to have his Sabbath. God have, will have a sabbatical and God will not work for a 1,000 years. Jesus will be God, the Almighty God, the Prince of Peace. Uh, all those words that uh, Isaiah says that, 
It's about Jesus. He'll, he'll, he'll be God, the only God in the millennium. Jesus, uh, God will be out of the way if he take this sabbatical. And after the thousand years, it says, 1 Corinthians 15, Jesus will hand everything back to God, that God will be all in all, and God will be all in all throughout eternity. And that will, that will be the eighth day, the start of a new week, eternity. So what does the New Testament say about the Sabbath? Well, nowhere does it tell us in the letters to the churches to keep the Sabbath. I know some of the apostles kept the Sabbath. Of course they did. Because until AD 70, they were still under the old law. It hadn't passed away. Paul says in Hebrews, it's ready to fade away. So it hadn't finished in Paul's time. It, there was a transition period between Jesus ministry and AD 70 when the temple was destroyed the priesthood ceased and it ceased until this day there's no temple to this day so they couldn't keep the feast that, that was finished that old law was finished AD 70 and so all the letters to the churches which are to, uh, to us now Jews or Gentiles who have accepted Christ there's nothing about no instructions to keep the Sabbath day but the New Testament does tell us why it was instituted. It was for us, it was a law of creation to live healthily and not for us to be locked into some legal law of Moses or New Testament. Mark 2, verse 22 to 28. And it came to pass that when Jesus went through the cornfields on the Sabbath day and his disciples began as they went to pluck the ears of corn, and the Pharisees said unto them, Why do you on the Sabbath day do that which is not lawful? And Jesus said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. It's for man to live a normal, healthy, fruitful life. Colossians 2 verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of the new moons or of the Sabbath. So includes the feast, let no one judge you. You could make your own calendar up if you want. There's none in the Bible. Or for the Sabbath. Well, I've heard Christians say, well, that, you know, we don't have a Sabbath now. Uh, we don't have to have a holy day. After Jesus, every day is holy. Well, it, it sounds very nice, doesn't it? But it's absolute nonsense. Think about it logically. If every day is holy, then no day is holy. If you say every day apart, if you separate every day, then no day is separated. They're all the same. Holiness means you make one day different. You set one day apart. You can't set every day apart because you've set no day apart. They're all the same. And they use the scripture, Romans 14, 5. One man esteems one day above another. Another esteems every day alike. It doesn't say one makes every day holy or sets apart one day. It just makes every day alike. In other words, it can choose which day he sets apart. So they, they twist that scripture. He that regardeth the day regards it to the Lord, and he that regards not the day to the Lord, he doth not regard it. So separate means it's different. So you can't separate every day. So the conclusion. Well, there's no teaching to keep the Sabbath. I, 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 as in the law of the new covenant, but it's a law of creation. So we need to rest one day in seven, for it was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. It was made for us to rest and assess our work, last week's work, whether it was good or bad, like God did. He rested every day and said, oh, that works good. And on the seventh day, he said, it's very good. He assessed the whole week. So, that's interesting, isn't it? Every night you should assess the day. Have I lived for God today? Will I have a well done, good and faithful today? Or will God say of today, you wicked and slothful servant? And at the end of the six days, you've got a whole day to reflect. Jesus didn't rest because he was weary. He rested because he wanted to assess his work and set a precedent and prophesy his great plan of salvation. So we should do the same. It was a Catholic church that made Sunday a holy day. Actually, uh, 
I've got quotes in my book, 6,000 Years of Babylon, where cardinals mock us and say, you call us the whore of Babylon, but actually you follow us because you should keep Saturday the seventh day. You're Christians. But us Catholics, we change God's day because the Pope has power to abrogate and change what Jesus said. And we've changed it to Sunday. So Sunday's a Catholic day. And you criticise us, but you have a Catholic day. So when you worship on Sunday, know that it's a Catholic day. Well, you'll have to decide what to do. Personally, I rest one day in seven. I try to make it the seventh day, the Sabbath, the Saturday if I can. But if I'm preaching... Or if I'm busy, as I was this weekend, then I'll have a rest day today as it happens. So I, I can decide when it is it was made for me to get my rest. But you'll have to decide for yourself. The, the time's gone now, so watch those three studies again that I've done the last three Monday morning meditations. And you decide for yourself. Don't be pressurised by the doctrines of your church or denominations. Follow the Bible and decide for yourself. God bless you. See you next Monday for another subject. Have a bright, brilliant week.